welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and um, I can't put it off any longer. It's time to do the mid-year freak out book tech, book freak out, that tag that everyone is doing about this time of year. The mid-year freak out book tag, there we go. <laughs> I had toyed on whether or not to do this tag because some of the questions I was like, really? Really? Um, but then I was mentioned in Roz's tag, so I thought, okay, I'll do it. And in watching Rosa's take, I noticed that the questions are not always the same with everybody. Like there's been little changes. I know this tag's been around for a long time. The creator, I don't even know who the creator is, but I know they're no longer on uh, BookTube. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll do Roz's. So I had like written up all my answers. And then I saw Kim at middle of the book march. I saw her tag and she basically redid the whole thing and called it, oh, I gotta try this again, the mid-year Freak Out Book Tag 2.0. So I like that. So I kind of rewrote those questions and that is the one I'm doing. I want to excuse any noise you hear because um, this is the second time taping it because it's garbage day and the garbage truck keeps going by. So anyway, I am going to put, um, and again, this is the the, the 2.0 tag. I am going to put this down um, in my que the questions or the prompts down in the description box so you can see what it is. Um, I'm sure everybody has done this tag before, um, but just in case it's there. Besides, I guess this is a tag you do every year, so now I'll know the questions that I used. So the first prompt is, the best book by a, re a repeat author that you have read this year? And that was actually a really easy one for me. Um, that was, the Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. So this is the second Amor Tolls book I've read. The first one was A Gentleman in Moscow, which I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that book, but I loved this one. This was such a surprise to me too, because just based on the description, it didn't sound like something I wanted to read, but then I loved it. So I will say, if you have, if you've read, you, you read what this book's about and you're like, eh, don't let that put you off. Cause I ended up really enjoying this one. And um, I do have rules of civility. That's his third book. He only has three books out so far, I believe. Um, I have that on my shelf. So hopefully I'll be reading that soon. It depends when it gets pulled for the month. Prompt number two, a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. So there's a lot, but I decided to stick with um, Clytemnestra by Costanza Casati because um, I had this on hold for the ebook um, through my library and it came in and I was like so excited to start it and I started it and the first page was a family tree that I couldn't read because it was small on my, my e-reader and then there was like pages of descriptions of who people were and I knew I would probably have to refer back to that and that is a huge pain on an ebook. So I returned that ebook without reading it and now I'm just waiting for the print book to come in. <laughs> so that's why I'm gonna say Clytemnestra by Costanza Casati. And then um, the, the third prompt is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have two. I have both these books on pre-order and they are both by like bona fide favorite authors of mine. And the first one is coming out in August and it is The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. Um, this is related in some way to the Scarlet Letter, so it plays into the Scarlet Summer, which book cougars are hosting, which I, of course, am participating in, because that's like all for me. <laughs> like the Scarlet Summer, I love that. Um, so Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. And then in September, William Kent Kruger uh, releases his third standalone novel. Well, his third literary standalone novel, which is The River We Remember. There is a um, standalone thriller that like it's, I haven't read it yet. It's the one of his I haven't read yet that I think was he was gonna try to make another series, but then didn't. And then that character went into the Cork O'Connor series. It's a thing. But anyway, <laughs> The River We Remember by William Kent Kruger. I have loved his previous two standalone. So I'm really looking forward to that one. The fourth prompt is the biggest disappointment. That's easy. I don't have it because I got rid of that book as fast as I could. And that's The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. Um, I know people who loved this book and I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hated it. <laughs> I just hated everything about that book. Um, I should have DNF'd it, but so many people who I follow whose opinions tend to match up with mine seem to really like it. That I kept thinking something's gotta happen that, that 
turns this around for me. And that's happened to me before where I have been reading a book going, what is going on? I do not like this book at all, whatever. And then something happens at the end that totally changes the way I feel about a book. That has happened. Um, it did not happen for me in this one. <laughs> I hated that book, but I am in the minority with that one. So, you know, read up about it if it sounds interesting to you. It might work great for you. And if you try it, I really hope it does because it's not fun to be stuck reading a book you don't like. Okay, the fifth prompt is the biggest surprise. And I had to think really hard about this one. Um, and then it just it just it just came to me. I knew exactly what I wanted to to talk about. And that is Come Tell Me How You Live by Agatha Christie Mallowan. So if you follow my channel, you know I am working my way through all of Agatha Christie's books. Um, I hadn't really read her before I started doing this, so the books I'm reading are all new to me. Um and you don't have to have read her books to know just because she's Agatha like Christie, she writes mysteries. Mysteries are very well plotted. They're very controlled. Um, you know, everything is there for a reason. It's, it's a tight book. Um, so when I picked up this memoir, it's um, called an archaeological memoir. I don't know. I was kind of expecting something very similar. And that is not at all what's in this book. This book is, I mean, it starts out... The opening scene, I guess, is uh, her realizing that she that uh, her summer clothes are all too small and have to go shopping and realize she's now in the plus size section. I'm like, huh, that's not where I expected this to start. But um, this is, yes, this is an archaeological memoir, but it is also a love letter, a love letter to her hot young husband, <laughs> Max Mallowan, who was an archaeologist. And... Um, the way this is described on the cover, it says, in 1930, Agatha Christie and her husband, Sir Max Mallowan, who was not a sir at the time, um, <laughs> went on their first archaeological dig together and began a lifelong affair with the mysteries of the Middle East. That sounds very much like this is about one trip. It is not. It's about, it's, it covers about five years, but you wouldn't know that from reading it because it kind of feels like one, but that's fine. Um, but it does cover like five years. But this is just like, this is not what you would expect from Agatha Christie. She is vivacious and funny. And man, there's a lot of talk about, I think, diarrhea. <laughs> you know, we, you know what it is. You know, traveling. Travelers, you know. Um, it is just, it's absolutely delightful. I was so taken aback by this book. Because I went in thinking, I know Agatha Christie. I know what I'm going to get out of this. And that is not what I got. But I I'm not complaining. Because this was so delightful and so wonderful. Um, as I said, it's a love letter to her husband. Um, it's also her indulging her um, adventurous side, which you don't get very much. I mean, you do sometimes in her thrillers. I'm thinking maybe like the man in the brown suit, but you don't you don't get a lot of in her in her fiction. But it's also got this this interesting tinge of nostalgic nostalgic melancholy or melancholic nostalgia however you want to do it because she started writing this book in the 30s kind of like when it was happening and then she put it aside and then world war ii started her husband was in the military i think he was he was sent away i mean like he he went away with the military um i, I can't remember where and uh, she went back to london where she was working in a hospital which is she worked in a pharmacy in world war one so she's back working uh, the war effort in the hospitals in World War II, living in London during the Blitz, and it's such a horrible time. And she's like pumping out books like crazy, just keeping her, trying to keep herself sane. In fact, her fi her final Perot and her final Marple were actually written during this time, basically because she didn't think she was going to live. She she was convinced she was going to die in the Blitz, and she wanted something to financially support her husband and her daughter. So Perot was for her husband and Marple was for her daughter. And um, there was strict instructions that these books were not to be published until after her death, which is what happened. She just died in the 70s, not in the 40s. <laughs> um, but it's that was a horrible time for her. And then as a respite from that, she picked up this book and finished writing it. So there's this this... Kind of this, this melancholic nostalgia in it too. It's just a really fun, a little weird sometimes, but that's okay. Book about like, I mean, Indiana Jones is boring next to this woman. <laughs> so this was a huge surprise for me. Okay, prompt number six, your favorite new author, which is debut or new to you. So I have three. 
One is just new to me and two are debuts. So the first one that's new to me is T. Kingfisher. Um, I've read two of her novels now, two of her horror stories, which is kind of what I'm interested. I know that she also writes kind of fantasy and then she's written under another name previously. Um, I'm really most interested in her horror, but I'm really enjoying it. So I've had a lot of fun with T. Kingfisher's books. And then the two, um, let me get my books all ready here. See, I just, I just filmed another video, so all my books are everywhere. <laughs> my two debuts. So the first one is either Cecile or Cecily. I'm not sure how, how she pronounces her name. Um, I could probably look it up, but I forgot to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Cecile Pen. Um, and this is Wandering Souls. This was long listed for the Women's Prize, and it was a travesty that it was not shortlisted. This is just a beautifully sad book, but it's so lovely written um, that she does some interesting things. She pulls out the stoppers on this one. I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it. If you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to use sort of like award long list and short list as sort of a reading guide to find books, some different books, this is a good place to start. Um, it's not long. It did not take me long to read. Um, this is an advanced readers collection, uh, advanced readers edition that I won off a of Goodreads on, on one off a of Goodreads, one off a of giveaway, giveaway on Goodreads. Um, but it, I was like, oh, what's this book? I never heard of it. And then next thing I know, I'm looking at the long list for the Women's Prize. I'm like, I think I have that book. And I pulled it out and it was this one. And it's so deserving of all the praise. Um, I know that there are some other awards coming up that it may be eligible for. And I hope it makes some appearance because I really enjoyed it. And then my, my, my third new author, my second debut author is... I'm still reading this, but this is because I'm reading that I'm recording this on June 30th. I plan to finish this on June 30th, but this is Body Grammar by Jules Oman. So Jules Oman is a local to me author. Um, she lives in Portland um, and this book is set. Well, it's set in Portland and then it's set in the world, in the international world of modeling. Um, but the Portland, the Oregon parts are wonderful. This right, this is, I was a very, um, impressed I have I am very impressed by what I am reading in this book um I heard I had heard a little bit about this book when it kind of pre-released but then I didn't hear anything and so um I kind of came I came across this book on a display at Powell's for Pacific Northwest authors there were sale books and I picked it up and I'm like oh I can read this for pride month because it's a, it's it, it's a pride book and um I, I am just completely blown away at how 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 wonderful this is. There, I mean, it's a debut. There are a couple little like um, there's some consistency errors, and there's a couple places where I wish she'd gone a little bit farther into detail, and other places where maybe she didn't need to go so much into detail. Whatever. I mean, there's little tiny little things, just teensy tiny little issues that just debut author sort of things. Um, but other than that, this is an author that I will be following, and I will be reading whatever she puts out. Um, and that's Jules Omen. Okay. Number eight, who is your fav your newest favorite character? That is, let me get the book out, repeat, <sighs> Billy from The Lincoln Highway. So Billy is, what is up with my books here? The pages are all messed up. Billy <laughs> is Emmett's younger brother. So Billy is the child in this book. And he has this wonderful, you know, he's a child who has that uh, wonderful sense of awe about everything. But he's also, in many ways, by far, by far, the smartest one in this book. And you can't help but love Billy. Billy is just wonderful. And he's unproblematic. And I like that because you don't see that in a lot of modern, just unproblematic children in books. And so I really enjoyed Billy in this book. I like the other characters too, but Billy was my favorite. Okay, prompt number nine is a book that made you cry. I don't know if these books, I have two. I don't know if they've made me cry. I can't remember, but they definitely made me very sad. Um, and the first one I've already mentioned, and that is Wandering Souls by Cecile or Cecile Penn. Um, this is about, so a young Vietnamese, she's a teenager, Vietnamese girl, um, is sent ahead of, she is sent with two of her younger brothers. She has more younger siblings. She's the oldest sibling. She has more younger siblings, but she's sent with two of her younger brothers um, ahead of the rest of the family on a way basically to be a boat person. To Hong Kong and then to the United States and then um, this is from the back of the book not a spoiler <laughs> um, she and her two brothers they make it they make it to Hong Kong and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting for the rest of the family basically the rest of the family never shows up um, something happens 
And then instead of going to America for reasons that are actually incredibly strangely believable like yeah I totally I do actually think this is like the most believe I was gonna say the most believable thing in the book because this whole book is is incredibly believable but like yeah that would happen um yes I totally see what's going on here um for re for other reasons she ends up in Thatcher's England and so with her two brothers and it's just about them trying to make their way um, while dealing with grief and having to live the refugee experience and being in this country that's completely unknown to them and that they weren't even planning to go to and at a time when, um, you know, not that refugees have ever been welcomed like they should be, but they weren't then. So really just a, just a very, it, this deals a lot with grief. It's very sad, um, but it's very beautiful. And then the second one was the Lost Journals of Sakahawea by Deborah Magpie Erling. Um, it was about Sakahawea from Lewis and Clark's Core of Discovery. I did a standalone review of this. Put the card up. I guess it goes up on that side. <laughs> so I won't go too much into it, but I was so sad. I mean, we're taught in schools about Sakahawea. Um, first of all, we mispronounce her name. Her name is not Sakajawea. It's Sakahawea. And, um, you know we sort of get this, she's a hero. She's like the superhero almost all of a sudden, you know, legendary. She almost gets a legendary status. But the fact was that she was a sex trafficked young girl who had a very sad and hard life. And this really paints that in a realistic light. Um, and I think it's important to have, to know those stories. Um, obviously this is a fictionalization. We don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. My light just went out. I'll have to charge that. <laughs> We won't, uh, we don't know for sure what happened in her life because it's not well documented, but this, what is in this book is a very possible version of her life and it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And it really kind of makes you think about it. I mean, I live in Oregon, so I owe a big debt to Sakahawea. Um, and it really puts this in a very realistic and very sad and tragic light. Prompt number 10 is a book that made you laugh. So um, this is a book by Andrew Schaefer. And if you don't know who Andrew Schaefer is, this is sort of like a rundown of what his shtick is, at least his current shtick. So his first entry into this current shtick didn't work very well for reasons that will be obvious. So it was called The Day of the Donald. And um, it was basically about Donald Trump being elected president and like completely screwing the nation over. And then like an intrepid tabloid journalist, I think. I haven't read this book. Um, tabloid journalist has to like uncover all the crap that he did and then like saves the nation. I don't think that's fiction. <laughs> that's a little too close to reality. Um, I'm sure it was funny, but it didn't take off. His next foray into this um, really did. And those are the Obama and Biden mysteries. This is a series, two books so far. Um, where it's basically Joe, it's told from Joe Biden's point of view and um, he solves mysteries and every once in a while, like Barack Obama shows up in his tan suit. He just sort of appears through the Arborvita <laughs> and they go and they solve mysteries. And then Joe complains about being old <laughs> and it's, it's, it's actually really fun. I just dropped a book there. Um, they're really fun, but it's hard to continue when one of them's president. So at the very least that series is on hiatus. So then he came out with this book, the book that I'm talking about now. And that is one that I read on spring break down in Arizona. So I don't have it with me. I left it in Arizona along with the Obama Biden mysteries in a basket so that my family, who probably needs to read these books, let's just say that, can read them when they go visit my dad. Um, this one's Feel the Burn. So this is about um, a young congressional intern who gets a job in Bernie Sanders' office, which is like the best job to have because he actually pays his interns. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what's in the book. Um, but she gets it by, <laughs> by like, bribing him with maple syrup. <laughs> like what? And so she gets hired kind of as a lowly intern, but then he has to go do like one of those, you know, go back to Vermont and do one of those things. And it's in her hometown. And they're going to have like a little festival. So um, she goes up with him and then a murder happens. And Bernie Sanders is addicted to this cozy mystery series um, about a, 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 a cannabis cafe 
in Oregon, which I thought was really funny. And then I realized there is actually a cozy mystery series about a cannabis cafe in Oregon. I didn't go check and see if it was actually the same one or whatever. But he's 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 read all but the most recent book because he only gets his books from Little Free Libraries. And the person who has who has the Little Free Library has not read the most recent one yet and put it out. And he's very grumpy about this. And anyway, so Bernie Sanders knows how to see it solve these murders because he's read he's read this cozy mystery series and man there's like maple syrup issues there's you know big maple is the problem with this big maple there's a sea monster it's just it's crazy it was so much fun and um i liked it i actually liked it better than the obama biden mysteries because and i realized what this was um the obama biden mysteries are told through joe biden's voice, which is fine. I mean, he does a good job of it, but Joe Biden is very much your grumpy old grandpa, or actually your kind of crazy old grandpa voice, which is not unique really, but there's no one like Bernie Sanders. And so this is Bernie Sanders voice and it's awesome. It is awesome in every way. And I hope this one's a series because I will be there and I will buy it and I will take it and leave it in Arizona with all the rest of the books. There you go. Feel the Burn by Andrew Schaefer. Prompt 11 is the most beautiful book you have acquired this year. And these are always really hard for me because I don't really care what books look like. Um, I'm not going to say I don't buy books for their covers because covers will catch my eye in bookstores. Um, but really, I don't put a lot of value in that, like what covers look like. Um, and ironically, this book that I'm about to mention, I did not get because of the cover. Um, I got it because I heard another author who I really like, um, Janice Hallett mentioned this book and say she really loved it. So I pre-ordered it um, without even seeing the cover, but the cover is beautiful. And that is The Maiden by Kate Foster. Isn't that pretty? I don't know what this book's about. I haven't read it yet, but Janice Hallett liked it. But this is, isn't that pretty? Ooh, it's kind of shiny with the light. Ooh, that's quite, quite pretty. There you go. And I'm not, I'm not one for book covers. Just, just a not. Okay, so the next the next question is one that was originally written, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Which a lot of people are like, I don't need to read anything. And I agree with that 100%, except I actually had an answer to that. But then Kim changed it to war or a book that's been calling to you. So I have one for each of those. The first one, the one I need to read by the end of the year, because I said I would read it this year and I am severely overdue for actually reading it because I should have read it my junior year in high school is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. I was assigned this in high school, didn't read it, bs my way through the exam, scored the highest on it. And I've felt guilty about it ever since. So I'm going to do the audiobook of this. I just haven't yet, but this is the year. This is the year of Huck Finn, just so I can like pay that cosmic debt and quit feeling guilty about it. <laughs> and, uh, or the book that's been calling to you, which is not at all unique. I'm sure a lot of people would answer this. I know it's the same book Kim said, and that's Demon Copperhead. Um, I had kind of hemmed and hawed on it because I haven't read David Copperfield. And to read David Copperfield is an investment in time that I'm not sure I have. So I was like hemming and hawing, but then it won everything. And then I realized I could buy it through Blackwell's and get a paperback for like $11 instead of paying like $35 um, because I know I'm going to want to keep it. 35 in the United States. So I bought a British copy and now I'm just waiting for it. Um, I don't know if anyone would like to, maybe we can do a read along. I don't know. Let me know. I'd be open to that in August, starting in August or something, probably not July, but it hasn't come yet. So I can't share it with you, but that's the one that's been calling to me. And 13th is, and this is the first on the, the first question on the original version, but on 2.0, it's the 13th. The best book you've read so far this year. That was the easiest one for me because not only is it the best book I've read so far this year, it is my favorite all-time book now. And that is Mink River by Brian Doyle. So this is another local author. Local authors work really well for me, apparently. Um, and it's basically set on the Oregon coast, which is one of my favorite places on the planet. And it's a life of a town um, and the people in it. I'll be on, I mean, I recommend this book. It, it, the writing is gorgeous. It's poetic and lovely. And there's this, this in, interesting humor and there's magical realism in it. And there's all sorts of, it's just wonderful. It's not a lot of plot, but that's okay. I didn't need plot for this one. Um, and I would recommend reading it. Um, I probably would not recommend it to someone say, this is going to be the best book you've ever read because it's a very personal thing for me for it to be the best book I've ever read because 
it's about a place I love and it captures it perfectly, but especially if you've never been to the Oregon coast, you'll probably enjoy this book, but you won't experience it the way I did. But for me, this is the best book that I have read this year, ever, whatever, Mink River by Brian Doyle. So the final prompt is, um, it says content creators you've been loving. And I really don't, like that idea of a question because it's like I just wouldn't name everybody and we'd be here for even longer than we already are um but what I decided to do was um two recent I'm just going to do two recent like within the last week or two uh creators that I've started to follow that I've really been enjoying and they are brand new and they would love to have more people follow them and um so please go check them out they are tagged below. Um, the first one is Chris at Chris Daily Reading. So um, I found her when she started commenting on my vlog and I followed her back and she has an interesting take on books. We have similar styles, it's a lot of fun. Go look at Chris. And this next one, and I honestly can't remember if I found her, she found me or whatever, but I love her her videos. Um, and that's Zuzi at Three Stories with Zuzi. Again, tagged below. Um, she speaks very well about books. She's got a really uh, wide uh, interest. You know, she's interested in a lot of things. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, she's, she's just fun to watch and she's very excited about books. I really enjoy those two uh, creators and I would love it if you went and checked them out. Um, I'm not tagging anybody on this tag because I think everybody's already done this tag. Um, but if not, it's there. I will do this again next year. And there you go. So I've been so I've been talking for a while. And um, if you made it this far, yay for you. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.